Hello and welcome. I'm Johan Castell and you're watching a special episode of We on Wings as India celebrates independence. As India celebrates its Independence Day, you might wonder what are the best experiences in India. We bring you our top 10. Exploring the world's largest democracy can feel daunting and overwhelming. Where do you start? What should you see? Which are the must-see landmarks and unmissable experiences? When exploring India, no bucket list is complete without including the Taj Mahal, India's most famous monument that has earned a spot on the seven wonders of the world list. Behold the epitome of love, a timeless marvel in Uttar Pradesh's Agra. Located around 220 kilometers from New Delhi, this ivory-white mausoleum narrates an internal love story through its intricate architecture and stunning gardens. Intriguingly, the color of this landmark appears to change depending on the time of day. So prepare to be swept away by grandeur and history as you witness the breathtaking sunrise and sunset moments that turn the white marble into shades of gold. The Taj Mahal is India's primary tourist site, attracting an estimated 7 to 8 million tourists annually. in on a solid second place is the experience of embarking on a high-octane journey through Ladakh's rugged terrains on a motorcycle. Roar through Himalayan passes, conquer winding roads and soak in the awe-inspiring vistas. This motorcycling adventure isn't just about the ride, it's about embracing the soul-stirring landscapes and forging a memorable connection with the land of high passes. This adventure travel experience is, in fact, so good that it is often included in many seasoned travelers' top list of favorite experiences worldwide. The many daring roads, steep ravines, glaciers and river crossings make for dramatic views, and perhaps the most exciting part of the whole adventure is traversing some of the highest motorable roads on Earth with your own machine. If you ask any booking agent what to do in India, he is likely to point you in the direction of Rajasthan for an iconic Indian heritage experience. Almost every city in Rajasthan has a majestic fort, often sitting on top of a cliff or overlooking the city. Step into the regal world of Rajasthan's forts and take in its architecture, history and charm. These ancient citadels, like Jaipur's Amber Fort and Jodhpur's Mehrangar Fort, stands as timeless witnesses to the region's bravery and opulence. If we were to give you our top experience here, try a zipline tour at the Mehrangar Fort. For beach lovers, the classic destination in India is the laid-back former Portuguese state of Goa. The pace of this small state is slower than the bustling big cities, so escape to the sun-kissed beaches and vibrant streets of Goa and indulge in a rhythmic blend of relaxation and revelry. Bask in the golden sands, savor delectable seafood and sway to the tunes of beachside parties and celebrate life. You can venture into India's wild heart on an exhilarating wildlife safari and spot and encounter nature's wonders up close. Many iconic animals call India home, from Ranthambore's majestic tigers to Kasiranga's one-horned rhinos. Feel the adrenaline as you navigate dense jungles, capturing rare glimpses of elusive creatures in their natural habitats. 
What could be better than spotting a Bengal tiger in the wild? Or spotting leopards relaxing on the rocks in Rajasthan's countryside? India's wildlife safaris can be rewarding for travelers who dare to seek out a truly wild experience. For many who come to India, spirituality is an interesting part of the experience. One of the country's most iconic and well-known spiritual hubs is Rishikesh, where even the Beatles learned meditation. You can also seek serenity in the world's yoga capital, Rishikesh. Nestled by the Ganges, this spiritual haven offers a journey of self-discovery. Meditate on riverbanks, practice yoga amidst the hills, and find solace in ancient temples. Even for the adventurous soul, the city has something in store for you, like white water rafting and bungee jumping. India is the world's most populous country, and the rail infrastructure covers most of the country. For those who love to travel by land, taking a train is a fun and eco-friendly way to explore the country. Surprisingly, Indian Railways owns four UNESCO-recognized World Heritage Sites, including the Darjeeling Himalayan Train and the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus in Mumbai. So, embrace the romance of Indian Railways, a tapestry of diverse landscapes. When the summer hits India, it gets hot almost everywhere. To seek respite from the heat in a Himalayan hill station is a trick used by countless travelers, and during the Himalayan high season, mountain roads can get crowded. Retreat to the tranquility of Himalayan hill stations. They are gateways to cooler climbs and breathtaking vistas. Sip on local tea and relish the pure mountain air. A welcome respite from the urban chaos in India's many mega cities. Cruise through Kerala's intricate network of backwaters on a traditional houseboat and witness the harmony between humans and nature that defines this unique region. The state is home to some 900 kilometers of interconnected lakes, rivers, canals and lagoons. Few places on earth are as scenic and colorful as the Kashmir Valley and the Dal Lake is right in the middle. Home to hundreds of wooden houseboats built with incredible craftsmanship, this scenic destination is a top experience in India. Fully take in this enchanting experience by gliding on shimmering waters aboard a shikara. Experience the rich culture as you encounter floating markets and traditional wooden homes. Dal Lake is a symphony of beauty and culture that captivates every sense. Up next, we show you how India's culture has been listed by UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity list. Let's take a look. India's heritage is one of a kind. From its many colorful festivals, amazing lip-smacking dishes and countless unique traditional practices. And even the UN's specialized body for promoting the world's cultural heritage, UNESCO, celebrates the country's distinctive character. The representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity is a coveted register that UNESCO maintains. From performing arts, social practices and rituals, festive events and more, the list records experiential cultural elements that make our world more kaleidoscopic. Let's look at some of the spectacular Indian additions to this coveted list. Ram Leela, literally translating to Ram's play, is a performance of the Ramayan epic through a series of scenes that include song, narration and dialogue. It is performed across northern India with much zest during the annual festival of the Shehra, in which huge effigies of Raman are set on fire. The drama's hero is Ram, a popular Hindu god whose wife Sita is taken away by Ravan. Based on the Ram Charitmanas, a 16th century sacred Hindu text devoted to the glory of Ram, 
the play vividly recreates the ensuing battle between Ram and Ravan to rescue Sita. Apart from the stunningly dressed characters and giant sets, Ramlila's dramatic force arises from having the audience participate in the narration with singing and dancing. The Ramlila brings together an excited audience across caste, religion and age who enjoy seeing the basic essence of the epic, the triumph of good over evil. Durga Puja is an annual Hindu festival celebrated in September or October, most remarkably so in Kolkata, West Bengal. The festival initiates a 10-day worship ritual of the mother goddess Durga, a Hindu deity. In the preceding months, small artisanal workshops sculpt images of Durga and her family using unfired clay drawn from the holy river Ganges. Large-scale installations and pavilions take over urban areas and worshippers visit these spots to show reverence to the goddess. Traditional Bengali drumming and dancing are also part of the feisty celebrations. It ends with the idols being submerged in the river from where the clay was drawn. Durga Puja remains one of the best instances of the public performance of religion, ritual and art. Imagining the quaint monasteries of Ladakh also quickly brings to mind the Buddhist lamas or monks. Lost in meditation or chanting sacred texts having the timeless teachings of Lord Buddha. As performed in India's Trans-Himalayan Ladakh region and the federal territory of Jammu and Kashmir, Buddhist chanting features in the coveted UNESCO list. Mahayana and Vajrayana are two forms of Buddhism practiced in Ladakh and the several sects under them each have their unique chanting practices. Undertaken for spiritual purification and peace of mind, chanting also helps to invoke the blessings of Lord Buddha and various bodhisattvas, deities and Rinpoches. Groups of priests chant together while either sitting indoors or accompanied by a dance in monastery courtyards. During the practice, the monks also wear special attire and make hand gestures representing the Divine Buddha. Musical instruments such as bells, drums, cymbals and trumpets add more rhythm to the chanting. Recently, International Yoga Day was celebrated on the 21st of June this year and it was easy to see how this ancient Indian practice has taken over the world. Yoga involves carrying out a series of poses or asanas, controlling breathing or pranayam, meditation and word chanting among other techniques. Performing all these elements is believed to help unify one's mind with body and soul, leading to greater mental, spiritual and physical well-being. The earliest mention of yoga is found in the Rig Ved, an ancient and sacred Hindu text dating back to about 1500 BCE. But pictorial descriptions of yogic postures date back to around 2500 BCE, found upon the seals of the Indus Valley Civilization. Nowadays, yoga enthusiasts can learn more about this fascinating practice at yoga ashrams or hermitages and even many foreign nationals are taking formal training in yoga to spread the practice across their home countries. The Chow dance is a traditional dance style from Eastern India's Odisha and Jharkhand states that recreates Mahabharat, Ramayana and local folklore episodes. Chow dance is closely connected to regional festivals and is generally performed at night in an open space to upbeat folk melodies played on traditional reed pipes. The reverberating sound of drums adds to the rhythm of the energetic dancers. Chow might appear as a martial arts performance, but its origin traces back to indigenous dance and martial practices. That's why it includes a mix of dance postures, mock combat techniques and even walking like birds and animals. The Chow dance is an integral part of the culture of many communities and unifies them over their love of dance. Moving on, it is time to show you some unique and quirky museums in the national capital region. 
From the leaders of the most populous democracy on Earth to one of the world's most unique and unusual museums that shows you all about the history of toilets. Watch our take. The most impressive museum on our list is the Pradhan Mantri Sangrahalaya, or the Prime Minister's Museum, located in the Teen Murthy Bhavan complex in central New Delhi. The museum spans two buildings. One is this heritage building and former home of India's first Prime Minister after gaining independence, Jawaharlal Nehru. This part of the heritage building has several rooms that showcase some of the gifts that have been received by some of India's prime ministers through the years. There are also rooms that have period furniture, giving visitors a feel for what life was like decades ago. The second building is a newly built large structure full of modern technology that makes the experience exciting for both youngsters and the elderly. There are interactive displays and an opportunity to get your picture taken with your favorite PM using a green screen or take a walk with the prime minister of your choice. It is this part of the museum that really stands out compared to other museums, making this spot a must-see in New Delhi. The newest museum on our list to open its doors in Delhi is the Partition Museum. Located in the former residence of Dara Shiko, the building has been converted from a storage facility to a modern-day museum by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Trust, led by chairperson Kishwar Desai. The building that houses the museum was offered under the Adopt a Heritage Scheme to mark the 75th year of India's independence. The museum is set up across many different rooms that show the historical turn of events that led up to India's independence and partition. There are many artifacts that have been donated from families and individuals who have lived through the partition. For the visitors who walk through the exhibits and the rooms, the struggle of these historic events really hits home when viewing the newspaper clippings and personal stories told through interviews in the museum. The next interesting museum on our list is the perfect place to go for photography bugs. Located centrally in Gurugram, Museo Camera opened to the public in 2019. The museum has been set up from the personal collection of Indian photographer Aditya Arya and covers the important milestones in the history of photography that spans over two centuries. In this museum, every piece has a story to tell. From the very first cameras and techniques for photography in the world, to the type of cameras used to photograph the first tests of the atomic bombs. The next museum is perhaps the most unusual, unexpected and quirky museum in the country. The Sulab International Toilet Museum covers the history, development and science behind toilets. A surprisingly interesting, fun and small museum to see, you are sure to find truly unique and rare examples of different toilets in the exhibit room. You will find out how countries and cultures have answered the call of nature over the years. This museum is very different from the other ones on our list and is definitely not a must-see, but it certainly makes for a good story to tell your friends. India is a land of many religions and countless festivals. Let's delve into some special days that celebrate India's colorful and diverse culture. From colors and lamps to demanding rituals, India has an unending list of festivals that are as unique and vibrant as they are meaningful in seeking divine blessings. Let's look at some of them which make the country truly incredible. India's most colorful festival is Holi, which is celebrated in February or March to mark the start of the spring season. The spirit of Holi is a splash of color everywhere and on everyone. This vibrant festival is usually celebrated over two days. People of all ages celebrate by smearing colors on each other and dancing. The 
Sangat Kumbh Mela is a major Hindu religious celebration and pilgrimage. The event celebrates Jupiter's rotation around the sun every 12 years, with the festival site being among the four holy places of, of Prayagraj, Haridwar, Ujjain and Nashik. The congregation includes ascetics and common visitors, with everyone observing myriad tradition rites and rituals. It's a mesmerizing spectacle that plays a central spiritual role in the culture of India. India popularly celebrates the Diwali festival with a sea of twinkling little lamps everywhere you look, which symbolizes the Hindu legend of welcoming their king back from exile. On a dark new moon night, the country lights up during the festival, which usually falls between October and November every year. People brighten their homes by lighting earthen oil lamps to mark the victory of good over evil and drawing rangolis which are colourful traditional designs to celebrate the occasion. According to legend, Diwali celebrates Lord Ram's defeat of Ravan, who had taken away his wife, Goddess Sita, and his triumphant return to Ayodhya after 14 years in exile. Families gather to enjoy festive meals, exchange sweets, and celebrate this stunning festival by lighting firecrackers. Eid Mubarak is the greeting exchanged during the delightful festival of Eid al-Fitr. Translated to the festival of breaking the fast, Muslims celebrate this day to mark the end of the holy month-long dawn to sunset fasting of Ramadan. Eid al-Fitr is celebrated on the first day of the Islamic month of Shawwal. Traditionally, Eid al-Fitr begins at sunset on the night of the first sighting of the crescent moon. The festivities begin with a prayer service held shortly after dawn, usually in an open area, followed by a short religious sermon after which the fun begins. People spend the day with their relatives and neighbours, exchanging warm greetings and relishing delicious traditional dishes. Ooh! Ramadan, man! <laughs> Here we go! Wow! That's all we have for you in this week's episode, but we'll return again next week. For now, it's me, Johan Castell, signing off. See you next time. Goodbye.